started writing really when I was a kid, uh, about nine, nine years old, ten years old. That's when it, it sort of the bug caught me, just doing short stories and my first at the time what I thought was a novel, the radioactive cream cake, which <laughs> I keep thinking about rewriting as an adult. But so I went from there. And as I got older, you obviously real life takes over. You don't write as much. Then I must have been maybe 27, uh, just been made redundant from working in the coal mines and decided, uh, I think it's about time I had another go at this writing malarkey. And next thing, 10 months down the line, I had the first and second Evans Falling novels all done and dusted. Which, uh, couldn't find a publisher for them, which seems to be the case across the board. So we sold, sold the house we had at the time, <laughs> published it ourselves. Uh, and then over the years moved on from novels and my first love is films really. So it was natural progression to start playing around with screenplays, uh, which luckily people like your good self have uh, <laughs> started to see and think actually, yeah, these aren't bad. And I think it's something I'm more suited to. I've got more patience for screenplays than I have novels. Take less time. When I started out, I wanted to be a horror writer. I wanted to be the next Stephen King, Clive Barker. Uh, but when I wrote the first novel, it, it ended up, it was more fantasy than anything, but it was still action-packed. It was it was the action pace, I think, and I think that's what really gets me at the end of the day. It's got to be the pace, I can write anything. If somebody comes to me and says, oh, what could you do this thriller? And it's like, yeah, but I've got to be able to do it my way. I've got to have that pace going on sir and it does all come down to is it going to keep me interested and if it is then I think I can write it so if you came to me and says we want a romantic comedy I just no <laughs> it's not it's not going to happen but yeah action action films or novels I think I could do it well I know I can do uh, horror always going to have fun doing that but to be honest with you I think I'm moving more towards the the action and the thrillers it just seems that's what people want, so that's what I'm going to do for now, but we'll see. I say novel-wise, I would say the likes of Stephen King, Clive Barker, James Herbert, Guy N. Smith. In my formative years, when all I was reading was horror, but then I sort of moved on to the Robert Ludlum kind of stuff and, and sort of got into that, and more recently, uh, Jeff Abbott. Uh, Lee Child and people like that just again it, it is literally down to the pace they write at Jeff Abbott the first, I can't remember which one it was it might have been Panic it just grabs you from page one and it was like yeah it's a book but I'm reading a Hollywood blockbuster and I, I really think that's the way things are going to go it is and, and they've sort of they're, they're steering me more now it's like if I do think right I'm going to do a horror I'm going to write a horror film but can I do it with the kind of pace that's still going to keep it mainstream? Can I throw enough action into it? And, and, and that's what's getting me at the moment, those type of writers. Yes, it's definitely the Jeff Abbotts of this world. And uh, The first, well, the first project was the doomed straw man. I have no idea. You'll have to come back to me in about 12 months and ask me what's happened. I haven't got a clue uh, it's for needless to say it's been run away with um, and from there sort of moved on to things like obviously uh, was approached to do the city of hell um, which that was just an amazing as soon as I read the short story and a bit of a history on the uh, the writer of the original short story it was just like why would I not want to do this you know this this writers had films made with Errol Flynn in and it was just like Plus, it was something I'd never done before, so. It's uh, a throwback to your sort of the thriller noirs, but with enough of a modern, it's got that modern twist to it that there is, again, this real sort of steady pace into it. It moves along at a really cracking pace while still giving you a story, giving you human characters. And, and, and a real good bad guys. It's it's almost a live action comic book, but it's just, I don't know. It's it, it, the original story. We exp I, and I expanded on that just a little bit, not too much. Uh, but you've got like these police officers back in the thirties, forties, 
uh, and they've just had enough with the job and the way it's going and decide that it's it's time for some real justice and yeah it's like real real time superheroes really genuine people going out to do what's right against probably some of the nastiest bastards you've ever met but yeah uh, it's, it's one I'm really proud of because it was my first serious move away from horror and doing something mainstream and, and uh, yeah it's a piece I'm quite proud of Surprisingly, my favourite book is The Choir Boys by Joseph Wambell. Uh, it's a crime, a crime one about a load of police officers. And it is the only book that has ever been able to make me, within the space of two chapters, laugh and then cry. It's an amazing piece of written work. And you do, you just go from, this is hilarious, so this is horrendous and but it is all real life and without a doubt the best book i've ever read films this is a good one because i cannot ever round down to what is my favorite film people people ask me all the time and it can change on a weekly basis but for some reason Die Hard will always stay in that top list just due to the fact that it came again in the 80s and it created a whole new sort of, the disaster movie was just given a whole new lease of life um, and Bruce Willis, I, I don't care about Moonlighting, Bruce Willis was born with Die Hard and I've loved all the sequels, even number four, even though it's John McClane light, I can, I can still live with it. Um, I would also say that very recently, Zack and Miri make a porno dropped into my list and Kevin Smith had seen his work before, but with that one, it really sort of hit me that he can take a normal situation. He could r literally write, and, and my eldest lad used this phrase, he could write a film about paint drying and I'd watch it because he is brilliant. And the third favorite film is one that probably nobody's ever heard of and it's got to be Small Town Folk which was made by a, a group of young English lads and it's just brilliant it's it's a bit horror it's a bit comedy and it's just amazing made on no money hardly yet it just ticks all the boxes cool blimey who would I most like to work with at the moment actor wise uh, a man called Andrew Howard. Uh, he starred in a few horror films so far, all, all nearly all directed by Adam Mason. Uh, but he's an English actor, but he's probably the next big thing. He's, he's really... First film I saw him in, and regardless of the fact it was a horror film called The Devil's Chair, it was almost like we've got ourselves a Jason Statham that can act. <laughs> Sorry, Jason, don't beat me up. <laughs> uh, Bluff came around again just after I'd finished writing The City of Hell. And I was sort of experimenting a little bit, thinking, OK, I've had a go. I've, I've moved away from horror. Can I do it again? Didn't want to spend too much time on it. So I thought, and I'll just have a go at a short. What can I? And I don't know where the whole idea came, came from, but it just sat down one morning and started playing around with it and came up with this idea that about this man whose daughter's dying and he gate crashes a game that is all based around Russian roulette and I sort of wrote it and thought yeah yeah I, I can actually do this thriller thing and that was it just put it on my PC forgot about it until not too long ago maybe a month ago when I uh, handed it over to Tim and uh, just said, oh, just have a read of this. I, I don't know, you might like it. And he came back and, or you came back and said, yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, let's, let's do something with it. And at which point I thought, oh, I better read it again. And yeah, so still tinkering around with it, but I, I think we're gonna have a really, a cool short film on our hands that hopefully people are gonna walk away thinking they've watched a feature film in half an hour. That is, that's the goal, to give them the full feature film experience in a short. Um, I, I think it's going to be a, a cool challenge. I'm, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. 
because it's something I've not done before. But I know I can do it because every t well, as soon as I'm writing every script that I do, it's playing out in my head and I can see what I want and I know sometimes that what I want is probably not what I would get. But, like I say, with a really good DOP who's willing to work by my side and sort of say, Gaz, you're mental, but <laughs> we'll try and do it. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be... It's going to be cool because I'll be able to learn things as well. You're going to learn a lot off your actors uh, as, as you're talking to them, your DOP. I'm a firm believer that a director is a figurehead and yeah, it's like he's the person that's going to make the final decision. But I, I don't think he's responsible for the making of a film. I, I think he's there so everybody sort of says, OK, then we're all disagreeing. It's like putting somebody in charge. He's a foreman at the end of the day, and it's one of these things when you see like Steven Spielberg's whatever, and it's like, yeah, but what about everybody else? And I know that you'd never get anything else on the title of the DVD if you put everybody that was involved, but yeah, I, I don't know. I'm going to be one of these humble directors. It's like, oh yeah, I was there. <laughs> Again, that was a, a TV. Sh that's a TV show idea I had probably over uh, well over a year ago and I was just fed up with watching some of the stuff that is on TV and I, I just thought maybe I could do it it's going to be a nice experience to see instead of doing feature screenplays can I do a series of 45 minute screenplays that still tell a continuous story and I did the first 10 episodes back to back just sat down over a course of a few months uh, and wrote nearly all of them. I had a, had a bit of a help on episodes seven and eight. Uh, a young lad called James Whittington, sort of, when everybody else was sort of, God, you're crazy. You're going to go out and write all these episodes with nobody interested in in it because you've not told anybody. And and he was he, he liked the idea. He'd read the first couple I'd written, and he was willing to help. So and, and he did a, a brilliant job. And now, like I say, I've got this four season story arc, massive thirty odd page package to go with it um, and yeah I'd like to think I could get it off the ground and do something really sort of special TV needs it needs something new in five years time I would love to think that I was just writing and that was it that was all that that was that was my job and it paid my bills I'm not a great